Next up, we have a presentation titled Permissionless Consensus to Infinity and Beyond by Patrick lambian Monette from the University of Paris. So I'll let you take it from here. To share today, I propose, well, it's already quite late here. Uh, I propose going with something slightly lighter in content and beyond what we've seen uh, in terms of topics so far. So during my PhD, I worked a lot at the intersection of distributed consensus as is very traditional in computer science and distributed computing and applied math, where they also have different kinds of consensus systems uh, and trying to make those two models talk to each other. And that gave me a lot of idea about, uh, among other things, uh, what blockchain could learn uh, from the systems. And my talk today is about that. And also about one of my pet peeves, which is that according to uh, Satoshi Nakamoto, uh, Bitcoin solves the Byzantine journal problem, uh, or classical consensus, or atomic broadcast. And I'm going to try to argue that that's actually not what it does. And uh, I find it very annoying when people talk about this about it this way on the internet. If you need to take one thing out of this talk, it would be that uh, Bitcoin does not solve the atomic consensus problem, the atomic broadcast problem, and probably uh, it's more something like an asymptotic problem uh, that uh, I'm going to present next. One starting point of the theory I'm going to present is the Hoth's paper in 1974 called Reaching the Consensus. And what he considers is a group of experts trying to reach agreement on a, a correct opinion on something. And to do this, they exchange and then reflect and then exchange again and then reflect. And the way he models that is a very simple mathematical model where they have an initial opinion and then uh, in rounds, they weigh each other's opinions according to uh, how much they trust one another and then that forms their new opinion and it just iterates over that process. So there's an equivalent matrix form uh, with a fixed matrix A and then a vector X and X of T is just uh, the matrix A applied to the vector X of T minus one. And A is a stochastic matrix, which means that the updates are convex. Um, and the code uh, gives us a very simple theorem uh, that's actually a much older theorem in, in math, that if the matrix A to the power of N uh, has a, a column with all positive entries, then the opinions asymptotically converge to the same value. And that leads me to define the uh, asymptotic consensus problem, which is, um, I'm going to give it a presentation uh, like we find with, uh, in, in traditional computer science, so there's the convergence property with all um, all values, all opinions converging to the to one uh, final value, and then there's the vanishing disagreement property, where the distance between any two values, uh, two opinions, uh, vanishes over time, and then there's the validity property, where all opinions always say between the minimum uh, and the maximum input opinions. That's the starting point. But there's been many other applications using the, this same kind of model. So there's opinion dy dy dynamics as is in the host model, but also um, is very used in everything modeling, how to coordinate flocks of uh, robots uh, and collective motion and specific problems. Uh, well, flocking, rendezvous, coverage, uh, all, all those are uh, specific problems that this refers to. Um, and then a lot of synchronization problems for clocks. And also uh, this is used to model natural systems like cells, uh, especially pacemaker cells, for instance, or flocks of birds uh, orienting in the sky. Uh, that's more of a <laughs> motion coordination prob uh, problem, but it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a natural one. Overall, uh, any, anything that uh, pertains to the synchronization of control system falls into that category. And then distributed data aggregation, uh, especially in sensor networks, it's a model that's used uh, very much. Uh, and distributed load balancing and uh, distributed sin signal processing uh, and data science application in a distributed context. And so all of these applications share a similar set of properties, 
Well, a big set of each time. Uh, so they are concerned with low powered agents, uh, especially when we look at cells or uh, autonomous um, nodes in remote networks. Um, one of the aspects of this being low powered is that agents typically do not have uh, personal identities or do not possess global information like the number of nodes or the degree of the network of things like that. So in a way, it's another sort of permissionlessness, not because new agents can enter the system, but because they don't have identities. Um, it's okay to be approximate. Not everyone needs to have the exact same behavior so long as it remains within a range of error, of error that's, uh, that's uh, acceptable. On the other hand, things should go fast. When you're trying to synchronize clocks, uh, you want them to be running so that your application can start. And then um, a consequence of that is that you should be making regular progress, and it's more important to be making regular progress towards a goal than to wait and be absolutely sure that you're correct. To discuss extensions to the host model, uh, you well, there's been a lot of work in the decades since, but I'm going to focus on dynamic graphs, which is the fact that you have a partial communication graph, whereas in the host model, all experts communicate with one another. And this partial communication graph is subject to changing over time. And also, you're going to have dynamic weights, uh, A, because maybe you've lost communication, and also because you may want to adapt weights over time. And so the general shape of the update is this one, uh, agent I takes as new value the weighted average of uh, the old values of his neighbors in round T. And so I'm speaking in rounds, but these models actually are fairly tolerant of asynchronicity. It's just that it's much more comfortable to express them in a synchronous context. We have a few theorems. Uh, there's many, many theorems about those systems, but a few that are very important is that if you have a system with bidirectional interactions, then you're going to get a synthetic consensus whenever the network never uh, goes into a permanent split. So if regardless of how long it takes, some, some agent ends up hearing from another one uh, at all times, then eventually you'll reach some sort of consensus. And that's modulo some small technicalities that I don't want to get into. Uh, and then another one is that for non-bidirectional net networks, if the network has a radius, so that means if some node is able to broadcast uh, in constant time all the time, and that node may be, maybe change changes, uh, then this agreement also vanishes geometrically. And what this means is you should be thinking of maybe go back to to uh, physics, uh, high school physics. Um, so if you've got a circuit with a resistor and a capacitor. It's regulated with a, a first degree linear uh, differential equation. So the solution is an exponential and you see this nice little curvy shape. Uh, and so if you've got an exponential uh, decrease of the tension uh, uh, at the extremities of the, of the resistor. And maybe some of you are already seeing where I'm going with this. So just to give it a little more picture things a little more clearly, this is a, a figure from a recent paper of mine. Um, and on the right side, you actually see a pathological example where this characteristic time before convergence is very, very long, exponential in the number of nodes, whereas on the right side, it's uh, much faster. But on both sides, you see this smooth exponential contraction of this disagreement. We all know that it's got three uh, main properties. One is that all nodes need to, uh, should decide. The other one is that if they've decided, then the decision should be the same. And then the validity con condition is that the decision should belong to the input of, um, of the nodes. And I'm not putting any sets here because, well, the uh, specific uh, condition depends on the problem. If you're considering a Byzantine problem, for instance, you maybe don't want the uh, input to be among the input proposed by the uh, malicious nodes. Um, and it's a very hard problem because it's basically undoable if you've got asynchronous systems. And if you've got more than uh, a third of Byzantine faults, uh, it's not doable either. 
just to give you a feeling of what a uh, solution to this problem looks like, in Benor's uh, consensus, uh, randomized consensus algorithm, uh, nodes keep doing, trying to find a majority or a super majority for the Byzantine case of uh, similar opinions. And if they found one, they just rebroadcast re it. And then if enough nodes uh, have rebroadcasted re this opinion to uh, go above the Byzantine quorum threshold, then decide on, uh, they decide on that value. Otherwise, they um, propose again a random value uh, and uh, try again to uh, go through the protocol. And the one thing I wanted to say about this algorithm is that you see that it is valid and unanimous if decisions happen. And one thing is decision may actually fail to happen, but they happen with probability one, and that's the uh, tricky part of the proof in the algorithm. Let's compare this to Bitcoin. Because in Bitcoin, you've got miners who try to extend the chain. And hand of players, uh, the definition of what the object of consensus is, is the longest chain, right? Safety is supposed to come from the fact that the uh, if a prefix of the chain is very deep, then it's hard to revert. But there's always a non-zero chance of getting it rewritten because <laughs> Maybe we're very, very unlucky and uh, uh, an adversarial player, even if he doesn't have any overpowering uh, power, uh, computing power just gets very lucky and uh, is able to rewrite the entire chain. So that's a very unlikely but non-zero event. More importantly for us, the, the, the safety of uh, the, the, agre the agreement, meaning the fact that my chain is a prefix of a future chain, and so the transactions that are in it are valid, depends on the system keeping uh, being online all the time forever. That was uh, Victor's point. So it's a never ending process. And I just wanted to re uh, point out to you the similarities between this, uh, this safety condition in, sp in its specificity. So uh, the one informally explained by uh, Satoshi in his paper that the probability of revoking a prefix that's uh, K blocks deep is uh, diminishes exponentially in K, it's actually very unspecified in the paper because it doesn't say exactly what the conditions are, but what it kind of looks like is, uh, especially with the fact that blocks are added linearly in time to the chain, um, that if over some period you've got a, uh, a harness majority and that your chain remains a valid prefix of the chain uh, during that period, then you kind of have you kind of have um, you have this uh, this exponential decrease in the probability of uh, getting your chain revoked. It kind of looks exactly the same as before, as the the the, the uh, kind of behavior uh, that you observe in asymptotic um, asymptotic consistent systems. So that's what I wanted to say. Bitcoin does not solve atomic broadcast because uh, nodes don't decide once and then stop. They actually elect a value that's going to be their decision for the time being, and it can be it can change in the future. And uh, 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 the system needs to uh, stay up forever if they want to if they want to hope this value to remain correct forever. What it would mean to solve atomic broadcast is not clear because in a permissionless system, um, maybe all nodes that were present at the, at the time, at the, uh, at the beginning, left and were replaced. And so what does it mean to select a value among the inputs? Uh, it's not well defined. And what it does do is, over segments of time, um, it hopefully gives some this property of the probability of your prefix being revoked uh, diminishing with time exponentially. And so the meta point of all this is when we're thinking about guarantees provided by systems, uh, by blockchain systems, maybe we shouldn't be looking at two hard problems like uh, BFT, but because these are very hard to solve, but instead maybe getting solutions from this kind of problems, which are much easier to solve and 
might still be useful for practical applications. 